have received section uh, one. I have uh, sent you today uh, afternoon. Did you receive that one? Last time, uh, last section we have done basic uh, introduction of uh, microeconomics with all your uh, course information. I just WhatsApp because uh, I just uh, missed that. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, now uh, we'll start uh, section two. Uh, do you have any any questions? Last uh, lecture. Hope you have read and understood because okay, thank you. Uh, now we'll start uh, our second section. Let me to share the screen first. Hope you all can see the screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, uh, today we need to understand uh, basic uh, section, I mean, uh, in the introduction of microeconomics, basically uh, factors of production and what are the principles uh, we need to learn basically today. Okay, so after uh, learning this course, you will be able to explain what are the basic economic principles and what are the basic concepts of production with the stages of production in the production function there are different different stages and what are the factors of production FOP means factors of production and finally we will discuss product possibility curve I will give you a long words here product possibility curve or product possibility frontier. So these all related to production you will be able to learn after learning basic economic principles. Okay, so now first of all we'll see what are basic economic principles. So meantime also if you can't understand any word please uh, raise your hand or uh, keep any message in the chat box, then we can discuss your problems. Okay. So now, uh, because this section is very important, we are discussing what are the basic economic principles. Okay. So normally, first of all, you need to understand why we need these economic principles. Normally, just to take decisions. Okay. So any principle in economic, we use to take decisions. Uh, why we take decisions just to solve business related problems in particular because economics, especially we are considering uh, economic relationships of variables, then we need these principles to come up with a good um, uh, decisions. Okay, so you have to learn two basic economic principles in, during your first year. Opportunity cost principle, what we have discussed last time, okay, last week, not last week, before last, okay. So, anyway, I just going to brief this principle again. And next principle, law of diminishing marginal utility, okay. So, opportunity cost, I think you have some uh, slight idea now. Law of diminishing marginal utility, we are discussing in detail now, diminishing the meaning, what may be the diminishing? Anybody who know? Diminishing marginal utility. What, what may be diminishing? Diniti? What do you understand by diminishing? No idea. So diminishing means decreasing. Okay, so you should remember words, then you will never forget. Decreasing marginal utility. Utility means just simply satisfaction. We are going to learn that one also today. And marginal utility while adding one unit. Okay, so these are the basic uh, meaning of these two words. Diminishing, decreasing, marginal utility one unit of satisfaction. So, 
anyway in this law says utility is decreasing or satisfaction is decreasing while adding per unit the uh, utility is decreasing or our satisfaction is decreasing now with that uh, simple idea we will go uh, these two principles briefly first one opportunity cost principle the basic idea you know what is the foregone cost opportunity cost okay so normally it is uh, applied related to we are applying related to scarce resources because let's say one resource that has alternative uses because it's scarce let's say for example land okay so it is a scarce resource or we don't have abundantly that resource then we have alternative uses hope you all can hear me if not please disturb me hello bandaran we can hear you ma'am okay thank you so opportunity cost principle uh, scarce resources for example let's say yes vimadya uh, just you raise your hand Any any question? Maybe maybe by by mistake. Okay. So opportunity cost principle is uh, related to scarce uh, resources. Let's say you have a simple example land. Okay. In this uh, land, you have uh, for example you have two options, two alternatives. One thing you can build a house by using this land. Okay. So another option. you can make this land as a paddy field okay then you can just think out of these two alternative maybe your best uh, alternative is making a house there because you don't have any shelter to stay because housing you have you have to have uh, among our basic needs okay then you miss the chance of preparing paddy field or cultivating paddy there then what is the foregone cost the maybe the income gain from the paddy okay because you have selected of uh, building the house okay so i, I think you can uh, understand uh what gain by best alternative is and what lose by left alternative is the opportunity cost is explaining this uh basically we can see here see your favorite example okay let's say you have two choices last time we have done some calculations as well but today i took with the basic uh, with that basic knowledge just uh, two Uh, one another example. Let's say you have two choices, so you can see two uh, mango and one apple, and two apple baskets and one mango baskets. Just uh, imagine. Okay, so let's say you have uh, somebody has chosen choice one because you love na uh, mango more. but another person may choose option 2 or choice 2 who loves apple in that case let's say one person choose first choice he lost the second then opportunity cost is the satisfaction gain from the choice 2 because you just lost that one okay those who have chosen choice 2 they miss the opportunity of tasting two uh, baskets of uh, mango and one basket of apple understood clear to you all just with that example okay we'll go for another example simple if you have a cash in hand let's say 100000 cash okay so you have two alternatives first option you can invest it in a bank and you can get returns 10000 okay then option 2 you are investing in a business you can get 17000 in return okay 
So obviously you will select option two because that is the highest returns you can gain when you are comparing these two. But option one, let's say you have selected option two, option one is the opportunity cost. 10,000 you lost. Okay. So that is the foregone cost. I think with these two main examples, you again refresh your knowledge of opportunity cost. Is it clear that cost principle? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. On yes, ma'am. Yes, answering. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now we'll move to next law, law of diminishing marginal utility. So here I discussed two principles, opportunity cost principle. Now I got, I hope you have got the slight idea. Then second one, second principle, law of diminishing marginal utility. I just explained the meaning of three words. Okay. Now before going to this principle, we will see what is utility. Okay. So simply we can see it's just uh, has a value or ability to satisfy or usefulness. Let's say you are very thirsty. I think last time I briefly explained utility. Okay. So when you are thirsty, if you take one glass of water, your utility or your satisfaction is very high because you are in very thirsty situation. Or another example, you are in very hungry. So if you have uh, any, 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 I mean, uh, any eatable thing, maybe a lunch packet, when you are in very hungry situation, your satisfaction is very high when you are eating first. Okay. Let's say, uh, our first example, you are in very thirsty situation. You got one glass of water. You are highly satisfied. Then you have you can give very good value to that glass of water based on your satisfaction. Let's say you are getting two glass of water. Okay. Then slightly you can take satisfaction, but maybe not so much. Okay. Practically think. When you are very thirsty, you can take one glass of water. How about your satisfaction? When you are taking two, what will be happen to your satisfaction? Then three glasses, four glasses, five glasses. Then afterwards, what will happen? Maybe you are vomiting. Okay? So that is the diminishing utility. Marginal utility. When you are adding one unit, your utility is gradually decreasing or gradually diminishing. Okay. So I'll just uh, put one example with some figures afterwards. So uh, uh, you just got the idea of utility now. How it decreases with the time. Or oh, when we add one unit, the utility or the satisfaction is gradually decreasing. So that is diminishing marginal utility because we add one unit and gradually decrease in the utility. Okay. So now we will say briefly before going to that principle in detail, what is the relationship between utility and price? Okay. So, uh, I mean, uh, the, the utility and price are related with, uh, like this, let's say, uh, for example, what is necessity of life? Because it's our basic need. Yet it is free for the drinking at the nearest water fountain. So if it is near nearby, it is a necessity one. So it's a free. But just you think diamond. It's not nearby. It is uh, not uh, work as a necessity, but it's very expensive. Okay? So you can see the utility and price. So first one, your utility is very high, water, because it's one of your basic need. But second one, your utility 
uh, or satisfaction at that time. Maybe you are in very thirsty. In the diamond, your utility is low because it's not your necessity thing, but very expensive. Okay. So every time, uh, the basic idea of this, utility cannot be measured by price. Okay. Because here, first one, the utility is high, but price is very low because what is just free gift of nature. Now, water market is there, water bottles are there in another different case. But let's say just, just you are drinking water by using the nearest fountain or waterfall. Okay? So in that case, it's your utility is very high because you are thirsty. That is uh, important, good for your uh, survival. But in second case, though the price is high, at that time maybe your utility is low, but you can measure it by using the prices. Though the utility is low, the price is very high. Okay. So this simple example says utility is not always price. Okay. With high utility, maybe low price, maybe free, fully free. But low utility also, maybe the price will be very high in case of diamonds, okay, or any other valuable thing, gold, okay. So, because it's luxurious things, not necessities. Luxuries, uh, the utility may be uh, low, but prices are very high, okay. So that's why the utility means total amount of satisfaction that someone experiences when they consume a particular product or service, both. Every time many students forget service, the service from the utility. Service, we have different, different services, okay? Health service, education service, huh? that also diminishing utility, no? Let's say we do uh, one hour. Uh, let's say we do uh, five minutes. Your satisfaction or your enthusiasm may be very high. With the time, what will happen? Huh? For us even, gradually decreasing. That's why best 10 or 15 minutes. First two, 15 or 10 minutes is the best time to uh, get things. Otherwise, with the time, your satisfaction, your utility is gradually decreasing. Okay? So that's why utility helps to measure how much fulfillment someone requires in order to satisfy a particular need or want. Okay? When you are thirsty, your utility is very high when you are getting a glass of water. When you are in very hungry situation, your utility is very high when you are Getting piece of bread, piece of cake or a packet of lunch. Okay. So I think you can understand the utility. Okay. So there are main four types of utilities. Hope you are learning this for the first time. Form utility, place, time and position. Okay. For example, form utility. So your, your utility varies with different forms of product. Let's say some may like ju uh, fruit juice. So instead of taking uh, mango, some like mango juice. So we change the form from mango fruit to juice, the liquid. Okay. Or any, any other example also we can take. Let's say. Uh, some uh, like to take uh, some uh, tablets as pellets. Some are in round form, some are in uh, long form, some are in square form. Okay, so it depends. Even buns or any other eatable things. So you may like different, different forms. Okay, so maybe one form, your utilities main. Uh, more than the other form. Okay, let's say uh, uh, rather than taking um, uh, fish as uh, fresh fish, you may like uh, that uh, mackerel. 
Okay, so the, this type of uh, things you may like because different different forms give different different satisfaction. Okay, so place utility. I think form utility is clear for you. Different different forms, maybe in solid form, maybe in liquid form. Okay, you like uh, different different forms. Accordingly, your utility may change. Second one, uh, understood form utility. If you can't get the point, please uh, ask questions, okay? Otherwise, I don't know whether you understood or not. Okay, second choice, second utility is place utility. Place utility. Utility changes with the place. Let's say you are producing mango here. But the people of, uh, let's say, in uh, Colombo, you are, you are producing a bell, let's say, in Matara, or the area you are residing, but the utility, people satisfaction, people demanding, let's say, we'll take far away place, uh, Ampar, in our country, or let's say, other country, Jaffna, China, America, okay? The, they, these people like this product, but you are producing here. Okay, so you need to give uh, the you need to satisfy this consumer where uh, the consumers are there where they need that product. Okay, let's say you are producing banana, but your place people don't like more banana, but another place they like that. So you have to send these product to the place where your product is demanding. Okay, for that we can use which function to, to satisfy place utility. Let's say you are residing in uh, Matara. You are you are the people who like your product are in uh, Kalambu. So how to satisfy this utility? What is the thing we can do? We can transport them. Really good. We can transport the product from Matra to uh, Colombo. To uh, increase your form utility, what we can do? Let's say you have paddy, but you can't eat paddy. Okay, you need to transform it to rice. So we you can do processing. Okay, so even um, the uh, paddy, you can prepare uh, paddy noodles. Ri sorry, no, rice noodles. Okay, rice biscuits. Rice bread. Okay, so you are changing the form. For this case, you have to have processing in just to change the form. Okay, so as uh, Mandar mentioned, place utility we can give by transporting products from place to place. Okay, very good. Then time utility, let's say, you know, some seasons are there. Time to time, our satisfaction varies. Okay, because utility, I told simply satisfaction. Okay, so the time utility we can give by providing things at the right time when consumers or people need that one. Time utility. For example, let's say uh, just we pass uh, during uh, December, Christmas. Christmas time, let's say people need candles, cake. Okay, for cake, they need maybe eggs. Okay, so at that time, your utility is very high for these products. But off season, sometimes not December, maybe other January, February, these days, we are not, we don't need Christmas celebrations. Okay, we need, we don't need candles, maybe we don't need more and more cakes. Okay, so utility is changing with the time. For example, another example, New Year, New Year. New Year time, we like, we abundantly, uh, we need oil. Abundantly, we need other flour to make sweets. 
okay and then during that time that demand is very high okay then we have to keep let's say more oil we need okay uh during a uh, new year let's say during the sak festival we we need to have more and more the sak lanterns then that uh, papers and uh, the, the, the 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 things we need to prepare the sak lanterns may be uh, required and prices also may be very high but you know some off season these products are not there because let's say um during uh, banana um, producing time banana production is very high but maybe during the off season they like banana very much but we can't keep this long time okay let's say paddy so you know we have two seasons siala and ma okay so rice production is there during yala and ma season so during the off season we don't have this product so to uh, then i have given several several examples just to give the time utility what we can do for many products for the main function we can perform just to give uh, time utility how do what's your answer time utility to because just to give place utility we can transport things just to give time utility what we can do ravindu season time duration season ah uh, yes one we can uh, increase the time duration another one let's say you have uh, the product during january but your utility you require that one your satisfaction will uh, your satisfaction is uh, during uh, you are producing in january but you need it in march what you can do ravindu Yes, your answer is correct. Just explain that expired date. You know, expired date. Expiry date. Yes. Time. Uh, expire. Increasing expiry date is somewhat difficult because you know uh, every uh, product uh, has its own life cycle. After finishing that life cycle, that uh, product will spoil. We can. Uh, what we can do as a function. let's say the, uh, you this time you have a uh, huge rice production but consumers need during april now still it's february what you can do the but very good you can store the yeah. okay you can store and you can keep to take during the off season okay very good so likewise to give different different utilities we can give different different functions to give form utility we can process the product and change the form to give the form place utility we can uh, use transport from one place to another place to give satisfaction to the people who need that to give the time utility we can store the product and we can uh, produce we can give to the consumers at the right time they need the product okay and the possession utility actually when we uh, have uh, the ownership of the particular product we have the satisfaction let's say i have my own paddy field i have my own uh, banana field i have on my mang i have my own mango tree then i have the owner then possession utility the ownership of that uh, product the satisfaction i gain by owning this product is the possession utility so briefly we will see one by one form utility the value a consumer derives from products or services in a way they actually need okay i just uh, you can imagine some pictures so i uh, here i didn't add some pictures but maybe changing the form from solid to liquid let's say mango just changing to mango juice paddy changing to rice or rice changing to rice noodles 
or rice changed into bread or biscuits or wheat, wheat flour. Then maybe roti, biscuits, uh, bread or something. We are changing the form. Then the time utility when company provides goods and services to consumer when they demand. So time utility, what we can do. So here functions I didn't mention because just utilities uh, you need to learn. But if you learn with the functions, you will never form it. Form utility, we have to process foods and give the form utility to consumers. So time utility where we can store products and we can give the utility. So place utility available in locations that allow consumers to easily access them where they need that product. So place utility we can provide by giving transport. Then position utility, the use of perceived value consumer gets from owning. He is the owner of the product. So, for example, easy example, let's say you have simply the uh, food bike or maybe motor bike. So, you have that pride of the ownership. Okay. So, you can take it in a timely manner. Let's say you need to just go to some um, uh, any place, let's say boutique or your shop. Then you can easily go if you have your own resource. Otherwise, you have to hire one and you have to use public transport, okay? So, position utility, normally the value a consumer gets from getting the ownership of a particular product or service, both. Okay. Now, with the utility, it comes... Yes, yes, sir. Sorry, yes. Yes, any question? Position. Yes, position. Very good. You can't understand. Yes. Position utility means, let's say, you have your own resource. Okay? So that position utility gives you satisfaction by owning this product. Let's say you have your own uh, mango tree in your place. Okay? So after consuming that one, because you are the owner of that tree, you have that satisfaction because you don't want to go to a particular uh, gross, uh, grocery, particular maybe uh, supermarket or some place to take a mango because you are getting this satisfaction, happiness by owning this resource. Okay. So uh, let's say you have uh, your own, uh, just I took a small example, your own bike. So you, ha you are the owner of this bike and you are satisfied because you have the bike. Okay? That, that satisfaction gives you utility. Or uh, the, 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 we can't uh, actually the value that uh, utility because you have the ownership of this uh, particular resource. You have this satisfaction because you are on this resource. Let's say you have your own car, on uh, uh, vegetable garden, on fruit trees. Okay, so this ownership gives you some satisfaction. So the on the satisfaction gives by uh, the ownership of a particular product or service gives you possession utility. Now, got the clear idea? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma yeah. Thank you. Very good. Please ask questions like this. Then I know you are in, uh, I mean, some clarification is needed. Okay. Form utility, I think you get the point. Change in the form, we can give the satisfaction. Time utility, hope you got the idea. By providing at the required time, we can give this satisfaction. The place utility, by providing where the people need. Or sometimes some people, uh, some resources, they are not access. They don't have access to these resources. So we can store and we can give the utility by providing at required places where they, are, they don't have access to take. Okay. 
So that is place utility. Satisfaction we can give to the people where they don't have this resource. Then position utility, people gain utility or satisfaction by owning a particular product or service. Okay. So these four utilities basically gives consumer satisfaction. Okay, though we can't value normally, we can value by using utils or units. With the example, I'll explain when we uh, discuss the marginal, diminishing marginal utility principle, then you may get more uh, uh, meaning of this. Otherwise, uh, if you are, don't understand, please ask any question. Okay, uh, now we'll move to utility, scarcity, and price. Okay, so normally uh, I took some uh, basic examples just to make you easy understanding. The key to understand price is the relationship between amount of things that is available and the amount of things which is desired. That's what I explained in diamond and that water. See, what is abundant and diamond is scarce. But you can compare the prices. Water is free good, but diamond is very expensive. Okay. Then let's say two, one, two headed dogs are scarce. Can you see two headed dogs? No. They do not command high price in the marketplace. Okay? Because they can uh, demand high prices because they are scarce. We could do, no, nobody has seen two-headed dogs. Okay? But they have little utility. You can, you can uh, make good price, but the satisfaction is very low because no need of two-headed dogs. Okay, but let's say you need a glass of water. It's free of cost, but you have high utility. Okay, so you can say though goods and services have very high prices, but very low utility. Some goods and services we have very low prices, but high utility. That's why for both goods and services, in order to command a high price, it must be usefulness and relatively scarce. Okay? Let's say two-headed dogs may be very expensive, but it's not useful for anybody. Okay? So that's why you have to identify the difference between the, this usefulness and, um, okay, wait, I have one message. Six children have a signal problem in power card for our, okay. So I just uh, share this recording and the PPT, okay? Sorry to hear that because in my area also no power, no power. That's why I'm staying uh, today uh, in the university. Oh, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, madam. Yes, yes, madam. Okay, sorry, power disturbs me as well. <laughs> okay, so uh, so I think uh, up to now all understood. Okay, utility, scarcity, and prices. Though they are high prices, if they don't have the utility or usefulness, it's no use. Okay, so sometimes scarcity gives value. 
high prices. But if it is not useful, we don't want to have it. Okay. So these all, uh, I think uh, we have to uh, keep in mind the difference between utility, scarcity and price and how to uh, incorporate these things in our uh, normal, with our normal resources. Okay. So let me do record this. Okay, it's going on. Okay, so uh, you can see, uh, you can understand, I think, easily this uh, utility scarcity and prices. Now we'll move uh, law of diminishing marginal utility. Now the theory comes or principle comes. Now you know utility. Now we will see what is that law, diminishing marginal utility. Okay, let's say. You are getting one burger when you are in very hungry situation. First picture. Okay. So this is just to measure your satisfaction. Okay. Because we can't measure our satisfaction by using kilograms, by using liters, by using meters, we can't measure. Okay. So you can give the utility, let's say, by using just units. Let's say in here, the utility is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 units. Okay? So, very high utility because you are in very hungry situation. Imagine when you are in hungry situation, you are getting a burger. Okay? So, next time, the same person, you are getting another burger. Eating a second burger will not give as much extra satisfaction as the first did. Eating the first burger gives you a lot of satisfaction because you are in very hungry situation. Your utility is very high. We measured by using 10 units. So, sorry, 11 units I counted. Okay. Let's say burger 2. When you are getting a second burger, though you are fond of eating burgers, but satisfaction is gradually decreasing. Now, one, two, three, four. Maybe four units. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, maybe coming by eating for your cases because we are very young students. Maybe third or fourth burger, utility is decreasing so much. Okay. But anyway, just for your easiness, I took only two, uh, three pictures and just show second burger, utility is decreasing. Additional unit you have taken, you can this decrease. Let's say another burger. So your satisfaction is again decreasing. Okay. So the satisfaction is gradually decreasing. That is called as diminishing mark. decrease just only one unit. Okay. So that is why your utility is gradually decreasing. This principle is called as the law of diminishing marginal utility. Why we call it as marginal utility when the extra unit, you add extra unit, first one unit, then second unit, then third unit. The unit of satisfaction is gradually decreasing. That is diminishing marginal utility. Got slight idea by seeing the picture? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, thank you. Then read the figures. Okay, so here total utility, we got first unit, second, let's say for one biscuit or one glass of water, second glass of water, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Okay, so when you are increasing the glasses of water, then your total utility is gradually increasing because you are in very thirsty situation. But afterwards, your total utility also gradually increasing and 
one point comes, the total utility also decreasing. Okay. Then our concern is not the total utility. Main concern is the marginal utility because the law is diminishing marginal utility. Okay. Let's say here, total utility divided by unit, 10. The marginal utility is 10. So we increase another one unit. Then your total utility is 18. Marginal utility is 8. Why? You are adding one unit, the change of one unit, change of uh, this total utility. While adding one unit, your satisfaction is 10 to 8 by using 8 marginal utility. Your utility is increasing only by 8 units. Then here the difference, 6 units. Because adding 1, 1, 1, 1. How your total utility is changing? Here 8, here 6, here the difference is 4, here 2, here 0. No utility at all, no marginal utility. Even though you increase one glass of water from 5th glass to 6th glass, the utility is 0, no marginal utility here. Then if you add more, the marginal utility is minus. That's why at that time you may be vomiting more and more. Okay, the same product, you can change the product and you can practically experience it. Okay, you may have experienced. Okay, now let me say wait. Oh, can't you hear me? Hello? Madam, the end of oh. the last. Okay, should I explain again? This one is okay. Previous one is okay for you? Yes, madam. The oh. previous slide, the last. Uh, okay. Yeah. This one, okay. Is it this slide you are explaining? Yes, madam. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let's say uh, just here I took burger example. Okay. Let's say you are taking one burger. Your satisfaction is very high because you are in very hungry situation. Let's say afterwards you are getting another burger, but your satisfaction is decreasing gradually when you are adding another burger. Okay, so I just told for you as youngsters, young students, your satisfaction may be decreasing, let's say, when you are eating sixth burger, not only two, but just I put the example as three burgers, just to show you clearly how your utility, how, how your satisfaction is gradually decreasing. Okay, so here high satisfaction, I just counted 11 units. If we measure satisfaction by these units, 11. But here, when you add another burger, your satisfaction is because you are, now your hunger is satisfied. You, you are just uh, no hunger at all. Gradually decreasing your hunger, then decreasing your satisfaction. Only one, two, three, four, fourth units. But here, another burger you are getting. Okay? Then, here again, no satisfaction. Very low satisfaction. Let's say fourth burger, fifth burger, tenth burger. Hmm? When you are in very uh, hungry situation, maybe till tenth burger, you can have satisfaction. But let's say you are not so hungry. First burger gives you satisfaction. Second burger, little. Third, little. Fourth, Fifth, maybe you are vomiting because too much uh, for you. Okay. So that's what I want to explain. So that is the utility is decreasing gradually. That word is called as diminishing marginal utility. Why it is called marginal utility? Because adding the unit. So marginal, we are explaining marginal um, uh, points later on with the production as well. So you will understand when we increase one unit, your utility is gradually decreasing. Okay, so that is the law 
or one of the principles, basic principles in microeconomics, diminishing marginal utility, diminishing, decreasing marginal utility while you are adding one unit. Got it now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If I need further explanation, please tell me. So, I just explained this with figures now. See, these are the figures. This you um, Just hypothetical values. Okay. Just to explain the situation. See, you, you have several, several. You just I took example here, water. Just easy for you to understand. Okay. One glass of water, second, third, fourth, fifth, up to seven. You are adding one glasses because one glass, adding another one, two, adding another one, three, adding another one, four, likewise. Then total utility is gradually increasing, but one point comes, it is decreasing. Then, but you can see the marginal utility, what we are discussing, adding one unit gives you gives gradually diminishing or decreasing satisfaction. You can see. See the difference? Here the difference is 1, the difference is 8. Here the difference is 1, the difference is 6. Here the difference is 1, but the difference is 4. See, gradually decreasing. Here 2. Here 30, 30, 0. Because here adding 1 unit gives Zero marginal utility. Then adding another glass of water. That's why at that time perhaps some, some of you are vomiting. Because more, no utility and zero marginal utility. Adding one unit gives you zero utility means no satisfaction at all. Okay. So marginal utility curve is downward sloping because Consumption of successive units gives you less satisfaction. See? Diminishing marginal utility. Here, zero utility at that point. Afterwards, minus marginal utility. See here. Okay, if it is 26, another 2 minus 2, another add, uh, adding 1 unit. Okay, so, gradually you can increase your uh, understanding how law of diminishing marginal utility works. Here I took units of orange. Okay, maybe let's say orange juice, orange glasses. So, here gradually the utility is decreasing. Understood that graph clearly? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can uh, add any figures, any examples, but the concept is like this, okay? When adding units, your utility is gradually decreasing. Your satisfaction is gradually decreasing, okay? So the definition actually, the, the definitions you don't want to remember, but just remember the meaning. When an individual consumes additional units of a commodity, Let's say the commodity is X. Consumption of other commodities unchanged. Okay, so you have to keep that assumption. Let's say uh, while uh, drinking water, you are drinking lemon juice as well. Okay, then we can't, though the utility is decreasing, we can't measure the exact utility of drinking water if you are drinking other things as well. That's why we are hypothesizing, we are assuming that consumption of other commodities unchanged. We are not changing that one. Only we are changing glass of water in our example. The amount of satisfaction derived from each additional unit, that word is very important. Okay? Every time additional unit, because you can remember the total utility is decreasing, increasing gradually. But see here, total utility is increasing up to here. But see. 
Any question? Okay. So total utility is increasing, but you can see the marginal utility is decreasing, adding one unit. So that's why it is important to remember the amount of satisfaction mm -hmm. derived from each additional unit of commodity decreasing. Got the point of diminishing marginal utility? Hello. Maybe power cuts from different different areas. For us also no power. Hello, got the idea? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma thank you. Uh, then we'll move to new section, thinking like an economist. Now this uh, theory diminishing marginal utility is uh, uh, two, 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 uh, two principles we discussed, principles of opportunity cost and diminishing marginal utility, law of diminishing marginal utility. So after learning these two principles, now we'll move how to think like an economist. Because you may remember your course content. You should know how to think like an economist. Okay, you all are students and students who are learning economics. Now we will see how do you like or how do you think like an economist. Okay. Uh, here and uh, let's see, I just correct one small mistake is there. Okay, think like an economist. Okay, now we will see, you know, economists will see everything with a critical eye. This picture says you that one. With a critical eye means normal eye and critical eye, I think you know. Normal eye, you can see everything as it is. But critical eye, you need to see something in a different angle. Okay, for example, here, economics normally, they approach problems and issues rather than definitive truth. So every time economists are thinking about problems, issues, and sometimes you just think the truth. How the old people think, okay, sun rises, sun uh, uh, sun rises from the east and it goes down from the west. That's the general truth. But economists see why it happens. What are the issues there? Okay. So this type of critical lies you can see to this problem. Okay. So uh, just uh, normal people will see, okay, that uh, rate, uh, it just rains. It is raining. Normal people see the rain only. But economists will see why it rains. What is the cycle that supports uh, it? Uh, the, uh, how it rains, how it supports raining by using the water cycle. Okay, so these all economists will see what is the cost components here? What are the benefits you can take from the rain? So these all you can see as economist. Okay. So another thing economist is policy advisor. Okay. So normally as what is it? He is thinking how it happens. Okay. And he gives advice to policy formulation. Okay. So that's very important thing. You have, you all should think as economists. Okay. So while thinking this, you have to have two uh, concepts actually, positive versus normative economics, okay? Positive statements, you know, we have many theories. Positive statements you are giving, you are having objectives and you are testing theories. You have already theories in positive uh, economics. But the normative economists, 
you have to have opinions, judgments of people. What you are doing by using surveys. You are getting judgments from the people's view. You are getting opinions from the people. Okay. But in positive statements, positive economics, they should see the theories only. So they are testing theory. Let's say demand theory. They are testing the theory. Supply theory. And uh, now diminishing marginal utility. That also principle you can test. The opportunity cost principle you can test. So some theories are there. But the normative economics, they see the opinion of the people, value, and they take judgments of the people. So what the slight idea of positive and normative economics? In positive economics, every time there should be a theory or principle or some build up concept. But in normative statements, you have to develop theories, develop uh, concepts based on people's judgments, people's opinions. Got the difference between positive and normative? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If not, I'll explain again. Please tell me if not. Okay. Then positive economics normally build upon facts and figures, give up the cause and effect relationship because we have the theory. Okay, so you can explain it by using this theory. The inflation rate, unemployment rate, automatically we have the theory. Okay, uh, then it deals with what is in the economy. So that is there in the theory. What is the demand? What is supply? What is diminishing marginal utility? Because something is there to explain. Okay? So it is non-judgmental and explains various economic phenomena and factors as they are. Non-judgmental. We are not judging because theory is already there. We are just explaining. Now, I explain diminishing marginal utility. In the future, uh, not next week, the, after next, I'll explain the demand theory, supply theory. So I can explain the existing theories in positive economics. But in normative economics, you can get what should be. Okay? So that means it is the reality. So you are, they are not dis discussing the theories here. We are taking the people's actual views. Okay. So for example, the basis of normative economics is values and judgments or what is fair and what is wrong in our present economic surrounding. Then, for example, do higher minimum wages cause higher rates of youth unemployment? Wages, minimum wages are higher because many are getting low wages. Is it result of high rates of youth unemployment because they are not having proper wages? For this, we have to do people's opinions. We have to get people's judgments, people's opinions. Okay, that's why it is called as normative economics. Are higher minimum wages better for young workers? For these questions, to answer these questions, we don't have any theory. We have to take people's opinion, young people's or youth's opinion, and just to take an idea and how we explain whether these minimum wages cause increase uh, the uh, high rate of unemployment. Okay. Then these are the uh, just uh, rough idea of this normative and uh, positive economics. Here you can see clearly the meaning. Positive economics based on actual data, facts, numbers, because we have the theory. But normative economics, you know, based on opinion, value of interpreter. Okay, because... We trust on the people who are answering. 
who are giving ideas. We, we have to trust on the people's opinion, okay, in normative economics. So, in case of verification, results can be verified because theory is there already. Okay, so we can test the theory. But in normative economics, verification is not possible because we are getting people's idea. People's idea may change time to time. Okay, so your first year, maybe you like microeconomics very much. You are learning the basics. But afterwards, if you learn the basics, you may not like to learn uh, these basic concepts because you have more knowledge there. Okay, so that's why it's difficult to verify no clear cut theories to prove it. Okay, so with respect to application, normally safe beyond doubt because we have the theory. But in normative economics, we are getting people's idea, no way to test the feasibility and applicability of various fields because let's say I am taking opinion of you people, students from uh, Aquinas College. So your opinion means just narrow down to your institute, not to all higher education institutes. Okay, so that's why applicability is low when we do some normative economics. Okay, so we have to think like this. When we are thinking as economists, we have to think whether we are working as positive economics, whether we are working as normative economists. Okay, so when we consider the scope of results, in positive economics, results and statements are descriptive and objective. We have objectives and all descriptive uh, descriptions are there because there is a theory. But uh, in that, uh, uh, so the, the normative economics also, they have the same idea because some are different, different some are having same uh, results. Then you can see, you can prescribe and you can uh, put uh, subject. Um, so here, uh, I think uh, you can identify the difference between objective and subjective. Objective means theory is theory. It is, uh, it will not change based on people to people. Let's say demand theory. You can't change the theory. It's a theory. It's not subjective. Subjective means it changes with the people's idea. Let's say when I see beauty, I see beauty, I see something is beautiful, but another person will say, no, it's not beautiful. It's subjective. When I'm eating something, I feel uh, very good taste. But another person, those who don't like that one, Another person who doesn't like that product or food may be, he says, no, I don't like it. It's not tasty. Okay. So that's why these normative economists are thinking in subjective way. Person to person, the opinion may change. Okay. So that's why uh, positive economics, there are theories. Nobody can change. So sometimes we can change if we do very good research. But anyway, we can test this with the theory. And it's not subjective. It's objective. Theory means theory. Then it will not change. But in normative economics, they are thinking in a subjective manner. Person to person, they are thinking, their way of seeing the thing is different. Okay? So the approach to problems also differ in these cases. Doesn't intend to solve, solve any problem in economy, in positive economics, because no problems, just testing theories, demand theory, whether when the price of a particular good increases, whether demand decreases, whether the price of a particular good increases, whether the supply is increases, you will learn these 
and demand and supply. Okay. So, in normative economies, it strives to find solutions to problems because we are working on problems in normative economies. Okay. Now, uh, have you got a slight idea of how positive economics thinks and how normative economics thinks? Or should I explain it again? Can you please explain about okay. normative yeah. economics? A normative, okay, thank you. Normative means normally we have to get people's idea. Let's say I need to take your idea of these principles of microeconomics, okay? So your ideas may change. Uh, maybe uh, in your class, uh, 37 students are there. Ravindu is giving one answer. Pranavira is giving one answer. Your opinion may change. Oh, uh, Jayavadana, uh, Gishani. So different, different people will give, the student will give different, different opinions when I want to evaluate this microeconomics course because it's subjective. Person to person, it may vary. Okay? So that's why, let's say I want to test the demand theory. So that is not subjective. If Ravindu or Jayavadana, anybody will explain theory in the same way. In positive economics, I think positive economics you understood clearly. Normative economics means subjective, it changes. Let's say I want to uh, see, I want to uh, understand the quality of your degree course. Okay, so some people will uh, evaluate the quality in a high manner. But some people will say no, not in a good quality. So it's subjective. People to people, their opinion, their judgments may vary. Some may seem a thing as very beautiful. Some are not. Okay. And some may taste any food. Let's say I'm giving a burger. The people who don't like burger may not value it in a high value. But those who like it may give very high value, okay? The satisfaction. That's why the normative economics is subjective because we are taking people's opinions. People's opinions are changing, not homogeneous society, okay? So therefore, the normative economists think everything is changing time to time. Your opinion today is not tomorrow. Your opinion is tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow. Your opinion tomorrow is not after one month. Okay? So it changes. So that's why normative economics changes with the people because we are taking opinions, judgments of people. People are heterogeneous. Their situation, their ideas are changing. But in positive economics, we have the theory. We have something to test, basic. So, people cannot change in person to person, okay, with the um, uh, research, with the long, after long time, anybody can change. But let's say the demand theory, supply theory, they are not changing long time. Till now, we are expecting, we are using these theories. But normative economics, the opinions, ideas, judgments are changing. That's why they are subjective to person to person. Now understood? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, madam. Okay, if you have any questions, please uh, ask like this, okay? So, uh, we'll move. Okay. So, uh, now we are uh, we are we are discussing how economists see. Okay, so economists see certain scientific methodologies. All uh, they, they see all in a scientific way, simply. Okay, because they are working with human behavior. Okay, so normally uh, 
the, there is a debate as well whether economics is a science because it del, uh, it allows certain scientific methodologies but human behavior is changing time to time okay so economists should understand these phenomena scientific methodologies as well as how to work with human behavior that is changing every time as normative economists say okay another thing economists make assumptions and build models to understand the world around them they are assuming things first they assume okay demand is gradually decreasing let's say uh, your shirt for boys when you are purchasing shirt when it is 100 rupees you will purchase one when it is 50 rupees you will purchase two when it is 10 you will purchase five okay so gradually when it decreases the price you your purchase the quantity of purchase will increase gradually okay so likewise you are making assumptions okay if so normally when prices are low people are demanding more and more with that assumption you are testing something let's say you are testing with the salt the product is salt okay so let's say salt price is decreasing gradually do you add more and more salt to your plate or foods vegetables when you are preparing no that's why some theories though the theories are there we have to think we have to assume things because all theories are not not work in a perfect manner okay so some goods are there in future i'll explain this called inferior goods if the income increases you are purchasing these goods low amounts and you go for a higher products okay so in case of um, uh, salt also normally when prices are increasing you have to reduce the demand if prices are decreasing you have to increase your demand but in salt or this, this type of products though the price is decreasing you have to use the same amount of product or salt okay so that's why economists make assumptions by using the existing literature if literature says something they are making assumptions different different people different different researchers says different different things by using these all economists add some assumptions build assumptions let's say uh, all researchers found that many researchers girls are more studious okay study more hours than boys that is assumption then assign let's say i am doing a research i will develop as economist i develop assumption mentioning that girls are more studious than boys that is the assumption then i can collect data from girls and boys i can ask how many hours you are studying per day then girls may say 10 hours per day 15 hours per day but boys may say only 1 hour 2 hour 3 hour okay then if i take randomly 50 students and i analyze the situation gender wise i may find yes girls are more studious than boys they are study more and more but let's say uh, i got the results but i i just based on past literature i assume girls are more studious they are spending more hours on study but after doing my research i found actually boys are studying a lot we don't know the reality but we got based on our uh, data collection okay so that's why then at that time our assumption is wrong okay then another researcher may work based on our finding our finding is 
boys are more studious than girls though they show they are not studying at all they are studying maybe throughout the night and day time they are just working here and there and showing they are not studying okay so like that we can assume something based on past literature but after doing a research we can show that it is not truth but sometimes we can accept our assumption yes ladies and girls are more studious okay so likewise any assumption we can build based on past literature and after doing our research you can support the assumption or you can go against the assumption you can accept your assumption or you can reject your assumption based on your finding okay another thing economists use empirical methods to develop and test hypotheses hypothesis means based on these assumptions you are developing hypothesis first assumption you assume girls are more studious than boys then your hypothesis is we we are discussing hypothesis later on we have different different null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis in this case we are developing hypothesis because we assume girls are more studious we are hypothesizing we are preparing first hypothesis girl there is a significant difference between the studying time of boys and girls boys use less time than girls therefore our hypothesis is girls are more studious than boys so we build a hypothesis then we have to test it by using the research got it these points how you think as economist economists think all uh, human behavior in a scientific manner and you are um, uh, they are making assumptions okay before that we discussed they are thinking positive and normative economics based on that they are developing some policies okay so uh, finally they are developing or uh, and test hypotheses based on the previous literature up to now I hope you got some idea hello yes madam okay if not please tell me and another important thing economists must try to distinguish between cause and effect what we explained before cause and effect you got highest results during your first semester the big, the cause is you studied well you are you ask different different questions when you learning things okay you actively participate in the lecture program during the lecture you learned you uh, studied a lot so then that is the cause for getting very good results that is cause effect relationship okay uh, another example you got cold because you uh, went in the rain so you went in the rain yesterday today you got cold cause and effect okay you worked hard you graduated soon cause you worked hard effect you graduated okay cause maybe you got that uh, covid 19 vaccine effect you escape from at least dying okay you just surviving just still you are living you didn't affect covid 19 that is the effect okay so this type of many many cause and effects you can uh, list out okay so economist may think they are distinguishing between cause and effect carefully but sometimes it's not always easy to do sometimes it's very difficult to understand the cause and effect for example our present economic crisis okay so now we are at the very bad economic situation in the country as a country we all are suffering but 
some are telling different different causes for that politicians problems okay or mismanagement of the economy okay so some uh, people are stealing money okay no any planned activities in the economy many many causes but exactly what is the cause is not known Okay, so that's why economists are trying to explain, not rumors. We can say rumors, any rumors, but we have to see the real reason why we have fallen this situation. We have all resources with us. Our country is the best country out of all countries in the world. But why we uh, put why we have fallen up to this situation. So these are the things we have to think. That's why economists are thinking in a critical eye. They are seeing in a critical eye and thinking in a critical way and distinguish or separate the cause and effect very carefully. Okay. Another point, research can be conducted by using inductive and deductive reasoning. We are explaining later on inductive and deductive. Uh, so, uh, no one way is the right way. Inductive and deductive reasoning processes are going on. So, we can't see what is the right way. Okay. So, economists should think by using the research only. Okay. So, economists develop theories which can be used to explain phenomena and make predictions. To predict things, they are developing hypotheses, as I explained. Hypotheses, hypothesizing things based on some assumptions. They are taking predictions. Okay, in uh, next 10 years, our economy will build up. Or any person can say, no, fully destroyed. Okay, so anything we have to think based on our uh, research. Okay. And the principle of falsifiability, that means all things are not correct, 100% correct at all times. Then when you are developing models, economic models, you may understand we have to keep some space for error term as well. Okay. That's why when you are testing uh, some uh, theories or some uh, points, you are keeping some error term and you can say 90% sure this uh, result is correct. But there's a possibility of making it wrong 10%. I'm 99% sure this is correct. But still 1% is there for the mistakes. Okay. So I can say 100%. But normal economists can't say 100% accuracy. They are telling every time there's a possibility because research also doing by human beings. Human errors may occur. Sometimes calculation problems because machines do this based on people's commands. Okay, if we are giving wrong command, you know, wrong result. Okay, because machines just, they don't have brain. We use our brain to take the service from the machine. Okay, so that's why every time we need to give the falsifiability, that means the false information, the error terms also will uh, occur. Okay, so researchers should clarify the condition under which a theory can be proved false. Sometimes we can uh, say this, that theory is wrong. But we have to have very good scientific evidence to show this, the, the mistakes or the uh, problem of a particular theory. Okay. Now we'll move inductive and deductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning is just, uh, the, the, these two are different approaches of research. Okay. So first one, the inductive reasoning focuses on developing a theory. Then deductive test the theory. I think name also implies the meaning. Inductive. 
okay we are focus we are developing induction we are in, let's say just introducing a theory developing a theory but first one is texting deductive deduction is there okay so the word gives you a meaning deductive reasoning we are testing the existing theory deduction but in induction uh, we are developing a theory so induction after developing a theory in the inductive reasoning the economists start testing theories in deductive reasoning okay just got a slight idea we are explaining later uh, see in inductive reasoning the process followed move some specific observations to a broader and generalized conclusion because inductive reasoning is based on theory but deductive reasoning the process begins with a general statement to prove with a logical conclusion because in deductive the theory is there already or in other words we can say inductive reasoning is a bottom up approach bottom up from the down it moves up because there is already developed theory okay uh, you can detect patterns formulate hypotheses reach to conclusion in inductive but in deductive top down approach from the top you goes down and develop a theory okay so normally in inductive reasoning the truth of the premises does not mean that conclusion is true in inductive but deductive the theory is there already so conclusion has to be true because you are starting from a theory the basics are there okay but inductive reasoning no basics so we are going from uh, bottom to up so uh, finally we develop the way we reached the theory then maybe conclusion uh, does not that the, the, the every time we can't say our conclusion is correct because sometimes you know our theory our based on our information the theory we developed or the concept we developed may be wrong that's why falsifiability i explained before some false information wrong information may be there because we are developing based on people's opinion again in like in normative economics okay so for that we need inductive reasoning now i think after reading all you can uh, combine these points and come up with a common idea how inductive reasoning attached with the normative economics and how uh, deductive reasoning attached with the positive economics because there there is a theory in deductive reasoning but inductive we are developing a theory based on maybe people's opinions or maybe existing information okay so example just i got it's very simple example let's say inductive reasoning now we are developing a theory okay so our observation what we observe pet dogs in my neighborhood are friendly what i observed so based on that all observed dogs are friendly because i observed let's say 10 dogs in my neighborhood families 10 families then all observed dogs are friendly the theory all dogs are friendly is it correct hmm? no no very good it's wrong because our observed dogs are friendly that's one case but we can't develop a theory saying that all dogs are friendly okay so you can develop many many reasoning inductive reasoning in this inductive reasoning process while building theories that's why all theories we build based on observations may not correct because you are not following the correct path okay so in deductive reasoning we are starting with the theory 
Let's say all dogs are friendly. That's the theory. Okay. Then we are hypothesizing based on the theory. All pet dogs in my neighborhood are friendly. Then by testing, I observe all dogs in neighborhood. Uh, I observed all uh, dogs in the neighborhood. So I conclude seven out of 23 dogs in the neighborhood were not friendly. Then I reject the hypothesis I developed based on the theory. All pet dogs in my neighborhood are friendly. That means not all pet dogs. Seven out of 23, you can develop the percentage. Okay, then you can see only this much dogs are friendly. So I can't hypothesize based on this theory, all dogs in my neighborhood are friendly. Okay, when you are developing hypothesis, you may be familiar with these concepts. I hope you got a slight idea of inductive and deductive reasoning. Isn't it? Yes, I have a good idea. Okay, thank you. Then another uh, uh, characteristics of economists advise policy makers. Okay, because they are building policies and advise policy makers, these are the policies to implement. Let's say in the economic crisis, these are the policies we have to implement to get rid of or remove or go away from our uh, economic crisis. Okay, we can advise based on scientific evidence. And another thing, economists see always cost and benefits of a decision. After taking a decision, what's the cost? What's the benefit? Sometimes foregone benefits, as I explained in opportunity cost principle. Okay, sometimes unforeseen benefits. We are not seeing the benefit directly, but in uh, indirectly, we can take some benefits. Let's say uh, you start a school. It's a good work. Okay. So unforeseen benefit is you may reduce thieves or drug addicts or maybe smokers. Those who are going to school and getting formal education, we hope they are not doing any illegal practices no drug uh, addictors, okay? So that's why indirect benefit is we can make the society better. We can close prisons, okay? At least one prison. Now we can reduce the number of prisoners in the prison if we start schools, okay? So likewise, we can see indirect benefits as well, okay? So economists see in every way Okay, now a uh, new uh, section we need uh, till we have 10 minutes. Uh, shall, we, uh, shall we discuss this in brief? Because uh, here also very important point. Uh, you can just, uh, are you tired or shall, we con shall I continue? 10 minutes? Students? Okay. Okay, Anna. Okay, thank you very much. So these are the main facts. Now I think okay. you got the point. Before we started, how you are thinking as economists, okay? And uh, what are the main principles, okay? Now this also uh, related to marginal utility. Now we finish small two sections, two principles, and how you think and see as economist. Okay, now we will see the factors of production in the production process because basically we told all principles we use to take decisions. Okay, so production decisions, in case of production, we need main factors. We need land, we need labor to work there. Okay, because here I took a nurse just to show service also a product, product and services. We have to consider both. Okay, casual labor, skin labor. So these all including labor. So here, today presentation.
Okay, okay. So, and uh, clear to you all. Okay, very good. So, then land, labor, capital, different, different uh, capital instruments, maybe tractors, maybe computers, okay, durables. And money also, we can keep under this. And enterprise, that means entrepreneurs are there who are giving very good idea to people. Okay, though we have land, labor, capital, if we have not good entrepreneurial skills with the enterprise, you may lose. Let's say I have abundant land, but I don't know how to plan the land. If I have plenty of labor, I don't know how to manage this labor. If I have many capital instruments with me, but I don't know how to work with this, then our all production process may collapse. That alternative uses I told in the land, we have to, we should know how to select the best alternative. Okay. So that's why we need entrepreneurship. Okay. So these are the main factors of production we use in the production process. Now we'll move the production possibility curve with the production. Okay. To learn this production possibility curve, production possibility, possibility means possible, the feasible, you can. Okay. So before that, we will see the theory of production. Okay. So for production, you need, you know, basically we need input and out. We need input to get some output. Okay. Briefly, simply we can say we need seed to take. A tree. Let's say we need paddy field. As output paddy, we need seeds. Paddy seeds to plant. Or broadcast. Okay. So that's why we have input, output. So theory of production says production is a process that creates value or utility. It is a process in which the inputs are converted into output. Inputs, we use seeds, fertilizer, insecticides, pesticides, these all are inputs. We are converted into outputs, any production. If we use seeds, we can take plants, that output. If we use fertilizer, we can get healthy plants with very good production. Okay, so I think you can get an idea of inputs and outputs. So production function says how input use in to get the output. Okay, so the production function is an equation or maybe table, maybe graph presenting the maximum amount of a commodity that a firm can produce from a given set of inputs during period of time. So time is there. Inputs are there, output is there. So, input and output relationship with the time, simply. This is a production function. Okay? So, inputs are there, output is there, the process is there. The process is, finally, you can take a product or service. Okay? So, in the production function, I told it may be a formula. So, this equation, production is a function of land, labor, capital, maybe organization, how we are organizing these things and technology or any other thing. Okay, your skills, okay, and your uh, trainings, this all may uh, cause to get high yield in the production process. Okay, that's a technical relation with connects all factors used in the production process. Okay, so here you can see the equation. You can practice when I am sharing this PPT with you. Okay, uh, please put your email in the um, uh, uh, WhatsApp group. Last time I forgot to uh, send by using your email because when we email also, you can uh, have the PPT with you. Have you taken uh, the WhatsApp uh, PPT? I think hope you all got uh, PPT. But please uh, share your email as well. 
Though you shared last time, I couldn't be able to get it. There is some problem. If the power cut messages are not prominent after finishing this course, okay? So here, if production, uh, we denote by using X, is a function of these are the inputs. Input one may be labor, capital, fertilizer, pesticides, insecticide. These all we use to get a particular output. Okay. Here, let's say we can use any words. Let's say capital. Normally, in the internet, it has K and labor L. Simply, we can say production is a function of labor and capital. Okay. So, uses of production function. We can uh, learn how to obtain maximum output, help producers to determine uh, whether employing variable inputs. So just you combine these two. I just correct and say, help producers to determine whether employing variable inputs costs are profitable, highly useful in long run decisions and least cost combination because just to get more profit, you need to use low cost, then your profit is maximum. Okay, so the fixed inputs and variable inputs are there. So uh, some calculations are there. Let's, uh, shall we uh, continue next week? Because I suppose. Because I think with the calculation, we will move. Is it okay? Because next week, I uh, plan to uh, teach you interdependence and gains from trade. Just we'll continue this uh, by using 10 or 15 minutes because some calculations are there. If you practice this calculation, see here I'm giving some calculation, then you have to do some calculations also. Shall we uh, continue next week? If so, from, okay, this, yes, from this production function, I will continue. Theory of production. Okay, so okay. today we learned basically main principles. What are the main principles we used, we discussed? Opportunity cost principle okay. and diminishing Dimension. marginal utility. Okay, so these two principles, opportunity cost principle, we explain what is the foregone cost. Based on that, economists start taking decisions. Then diminishing marginal utility, when we add one unit, our utility is gradually decreasing. Even though our total utility is increasing, our marginal utility, the utility or satisfaction gained by adding one unit is decreasing. That says, Diminishing marginal utility principle. Okay. Then we discuss how we think as economists. Every time we have to think rationally, think rationally, see rationally, and act rationally. Okay. We are not accepting things as it is. We are testing hypotheses, we are testing theories, and we are working with people and getting conclusion based on the observations. Okay, but they are sometimes subjective in normative economics. Okay, but positive economics you have to use by using a theory. Just you start from a theory like deductive process. Inductive process, you are just uh, developing these theories. I think these are all we have discussed today. Uh, do you have any problems or questions? Understood. We understood. Man. Okay. I'll share this uh, recording and uh, PPT with you. And uh, Madam, please upload. Okay. I'll upload this uh, to our WhatsApp group. I think it's easy for you uh, to read. Hope you all got the access. And uh, okay, I'll upload uh, apart from theory of production. The previous section, I just divide and I'll upload. Okay. And uh, thank you very much for joining. Please read and come because these are the basics I'm giving you.
please enrich your knowledge by reading many if you have any questions hope you know my mobile number my email you can text me or you can call me at any time and you can clarify anything because you are learning these points for the first time i hope okay if you get the information correctly from the beginning it's very easy for you to follow because now only 31 students are there so uh, please teach those who present now please teach others or if they have any problems please let them to uh, tell them to call okay then we'll uh, meet next monday okay good night thank you okay madam thank, thank you madam okay madam good night. good night thank you thank you madam thank you madam okay thank you recording stopped